You're listening to the We Are Libertarians podcast network. Find all of our shows at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Chris Spangle Show. My name is Chris Spangle. It is great to be with you today. Make sure you join Wall Plus at joinwallplus.com, W-A-L, as in We Are Libertarians. And I am talking to uh, two people that I like and admire. And Helen Gilson, I have gotten to know you on Facebook and Ken Armstrong. I got to know you through the uh, vice presidential debates, and they are here to talk about the Christian Liberty Caucus of the Libertarian Party. Helen, Ken, thank you so much for joining me. Good to be here. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for having us. And Ken has one of the all-time great voices. The first time I heard him in the VP debate, I went, holy cow, I wish I had a voice like that. Uh, You're very blessed, and you've been a preacher, have you not? I mean, I missed, like, George Whitfield in the middle of the field preaching to 75,000 without a microphone. You know, I may not make any sense, but at least people like the way I sound, so that's that's a good thing. (laughs) Let's start with the Christian Liberty Caucus. Ken, you are the chairman. Helen, you are a founder. Tell us a little bit about the caucus, Ken. Uh, Well, I'm very pleased. I'll let Helen tell you a little bit about how it happened, but uh, I'm just very pleased to be a part of uh, a growing Christian presence inside of the Libertarian Party. Helen, how did it all start? Uh, It was in New Orleans at the convention. Uh, We had an alternate delegate from Texas that was seated with our delegation in Ohio, Victor Inahosa. I don't know if you're friends with him on Facebook or not. Wonderful guy. Young kid. I just happened to be sitting next to him. We both realized we were uh, Christians and kept in touch after praying together at convention and just prayed for each other at need and touched base with each other every once in a while and just kept coming back to us and it being put on our conscience, our thoughts constantly that there needs to be a place because the perception of the Libertarian Party is that, you know, we're libertines (laughs) and there's no, there's no welcoming place for us, but that's really not the case. The Libertarian Party has been extremely welcoming to me. When I came over from the Legacy Party, I won't even mention it by name, but when I came to the the party in 2016, I was open arm welcomed and everybody knew I was a Christian. I was not a closet Christian, so (laughs) I, I was welcomed very warmly and I wanted to make sure that people knew that that was the case. Yeah, I think, you know, Ken, I know you traveled the country before COVID hit and, and talked to a lot of folks. I, pe- I think people have that perception that there is a, a libertine streak. But my friend Joe Hauptman, who's run for vice chair of the National Party, state chair of Indiana, great candidate, often said that libertarians love to fight for a lifestyle that they themselves do not enjoy. <laughs> and are typically, typically fairly boring people. Uh, but, you know, there is a large block of Christians, you know, there's the Christian Libertarian podcast, Godarchy, Anarcho-Christian podcast, you know, there is, uh, you know, and that's just the podcast, and I'd include us in, in that as well. Um, what did you see when you would go out and talk to folks in terms of uh, Christian Libertarians and how much they might make up this party? Well, what I've discovered uh before and after joining the the caucus is that there are a lot more Christians inside the party than I ever thought I was going to encounter. We tend to think of the Libertarian Party as almost a, an anti-religionist sort of group. It's It's got a reputation in the public of being that way. But um, we, we are a group that is very welcoming and very affirming to people of faith. Uh, we, by the way, Um, As a party, we have a Muslim caucus. I was just told the other day that there's a a caucus of uh, Jewish people in the in the party. Um, And, uh, you know, so we've got many different faiths represented. I frankly am an unapologetic, unabashed Christian. And I love the fact that I can share that with other Christians inside the party and also that I can be somebody that people in the party can come to and say, hey, Ken, what do Christians think about this issue or how do they think about it? So let's talk about 
what you emphasize, because there are people within the Libertarian Party who look at it and are scarred from the 90s and 2000s. And, you know, this was my experience as, you know, I've been in, in the Libertarian Party since 2007 and a Christian since 2002. I came from the Republican Party. Uh, and there is, honestly, because of the conduct of the kind of the what's now being called the Christian nationalist uh, or, you know, the, the era of gay marriage and wanting to use the state to enforce Christian uh, ideas. There's a little bit of hesitation when people start talking about their faith and how it informs politics. Have you met any resistance or is the, the scars of that era kind of falling away? Let's, let's start with Ken. I, actually, I, I, I'll defer to Helen real quickly because I do have some things to say about that. But since Helen was kind of the impetus of this, what do you say to that, Helen? When Victor and I started talking and shortly after we met, we were joined by Travis Grew from North Carolina, another great guy. The three of us kind of is what I think of as the, the founders that were just brought together and just clicked right away. We all agreed that we wanted the caucus to be a place where we can see libertarians through the eyes of Jesus and that we can help the libertarian party see Christ and Christians because those two things don't always happen. And for me, that means big tent libertarian, welcoming open door Christian. And, you know, when they say be that libertarian, I want us to be that Christian as well, that open and welcoming. So, so you know, Chris, uh, as a matter of fact, coincidentally, last night I was um, with a group of friends who happened to be Christians, and we were talking about a bumper sticker that I saw 15 years or so ago that said, God, please save me from your people. Um, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I, I think that to a certain extent, people who identify as Christians have earned the ugly reputation that they have. But I also think it's incumbent on those of us who don't deserve that reputation, if you will, to be somewhat assertive about um, what we believe the faith is really about and and uh, who we believe Jesus really is and what that should mean to a libertarian party. And, and so, um, you know, I'm sort of here to say, folks, we're not all of that. Um, we, we have a spectrum of people inside of our caucus um, that, that may very well surprise you. I'm not going to mention the names because I don't think it's fair for me to start advertising other people are in our caucus, but, but we represent a broad spectrum of, a spectrum of people and of Christian thought inside of the caucus. Yeah, do you take a position on denominations or, you know, real, theological beliefs? I mean, how, how big tent are we going here? If, if people profess a faith in Jesus Christ as their savior, uh, which is, you know, I can't say that we're not in favor of doctrine because that in itself is actually a doctrinal statement, but we don't get into a lot of the nitty gritty of denominational doctrinal thought. And, and again, I mean, we've got a, a pretty broad spectrum of people in the group who look at their faith maybe much differently than I do, but the focus of their faith is the person of Jesus Christ. Helen, do you want to weigh in at all? Sure. I, I can give you, we struggled with this because of our desire to have a big tent caucus as well as party. So we, we actually spent several months crafting a four-part what we believe statement. What we believe is Jesus Christ is Lord of the universe. We believe God created each person with free will. We believe government has no right to infringe upon that liberty. And we believe the only purpose of government where it exists is to protect liberty of its citizens. So, I mean, that's, 
that's as bare bones as we could make it and still cover what we thought was important to cover. Yeah, makes sense. And and I really, um, the, the caucus thing is kind of new. I don't know how long have either of you been or both of you been in the Libertarian Party? Just 2016 for myself. Okay. It's, it's the only good thing Donald Trump did is chased me <laughs> out of the legacy party. <laughs> Again, we won't mention that party by name, but uh, right. hint, hint. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I've I've been uh, associated with the Libertarian Party for oh, 22, 23 years now, but uh, as an uh, an active uh, dues paying member, it's only been a few years for me. So uh, I can't say that I'm I'm intimately aware of the origin of caucuses well let me tell you young kids how it used to be <laughs> the snappers, yeah. uh you whippersnappers don't know what it was like back in the wars of 2008 but uh yeah like it's it's interesting because if you were in the party like i was executive director of the libertarian party of indiana from 2008 to 2012 and you know working i worked in uh, with a lot of great libertarians from ohio uh like kevin nedler and jess mears and um you know, there there were loose associations, sort of like the pre Prague caucus uh, between Indiana and Ohio and some other places, and then you had you know sort of the radical wing with you know Daryl Perry and some of those folks, but nobody was necessarily in a defined camp at all, and I, I you know and the Ron Paul Republican types were in the Republican Party, you know like Justin Amash was already it was still over there and. And uh, they were telling us that the Libertarian Party was a waste of time. So when the Mises Caucus comes in, I was excited about it because, you know, that Ron Paul movement is going to come home to the LP. And that had a weird effect in that all of a sudden new caucuses starting popping up. And 2018 was like the first convention where you really had like this battle of the different cockeye. I don't know what you, <laughs> what you call it, plural, but, um, you know, so is... Is your caucus, ag I mean, I don't know what the rules are with all this stuff. Like, can you be a member of multiple caucuses? I mean, how do you, how do you f float? Like if somebody's on one camp and they f think that they're on the opposite end of the other, but they're both in that. I, I mean, are you guys trying to be, uh, let me say it this way. Christians, I think, play a unique role in the Libertarian Party in helping to, deveal, to diffuse some of those situations as opposed to inflaming it. Have you talked Hopefully. about that? Uh, Helen, you, you again, your your experience is deeper in the caucus. Where, where, where are you in that? We, we didn't talk about our position in relation to other caucuses. It never even came up. I think there are always going to be areas where we're going to overlap based on individual people's right to freedom <clears throat> of association and their particular area of interest, for instance, criminal justice reform, or if they're aligned with a certain presidential candidate in the Prague caucus, you know, that's endorsed by the Prags, or, or maybe an issue that the radical caucus is, is championing. And I think it's, I think it's foolish for us, knowing the problems we've had from having a duopoly to try to rein in or restrict any cross uh, pollinization across different caucuses. I think we all should talk to each other. Yeah, I, I feel very much the same way. I, I, aside from the faith issue that informs why I'm part of this caucus, um, I, I have been very active in trying to depolarize, if you will, the Libertarian Party. Uh, as some folks will remember, it was my push that got Spike nominated for vice president uh, at, at the convention. Um, and Spike and I come from, from different places in the party, different caucuses. But I've been very active in, in trying to get the different groups to talk to each other and remember that we're all aiming at the same target. And, and uh, so that's, that's an important thing to me. As a Christian, um, I, I add the dimension of informing my 
uh, interaction with people from my faith. Yeah, I think in the before times, it was it was like the government abolitionists versus the people who like just a little tiny bit of government. And then it, now it's sort of we're, the, the 90s libertarian talked about the Nolan chart and, you know, the top of the diamond. And now we're all back to left and right. We got it. I got episodes on that coming up. But anyways, um, yeah, I think the, uh, the the other in addition to just trying to unite people and try to defuse some of that in, in the way that Christ did. On the, on the same side, unity doesn't mean just laying down and not articulating things that are incredibly important, issues of justice specifically. And I know, Ken, that, you know, criminal justice is something that is incredibly important to you. Why is that? And when you say criminal justice, what do you mean? Well, as a, as a person where most of what I do in, in any day is directly related to my faith and how I live out my faith. One of the things that is very important to me in Christ-likeness is the way that I treat people, the way that I look at other people, human dignity and human rights and, uh, and the issue of uh, unreasonable bondage and unreasonable assertion of force on people's lives very, very libertarian thinking, but also very, very Christian thinking, in my opinion. And, and the, the issue of criminal justice, of government asserting its authority to impose laws that have absolutely nothing to do with protecting individual rights, but rather purely asserting the authority of the government, um, that's very problematic to me both from my faith perspective and from, you know, the, the libertarian political perspective. So it, it, that gets me inflamed when I see people in prison for things that didn't hurt anybody. Um, we need to fix that as a people. <clears throat> Helen, weigh in on that. I agree a hundred percent. I have been in Columbus with the, in fact, when uh, Spike was here and went downtown w and talked to the Black Lives Matter uh, organizers down there, and that group endorsed his campaign uh, nationally, those, those people just want a fair and equitable relationship with the people that are currently basically uh, bullying them you know if it's it's to the point where if if you don't fit a certain mold that you have a fear of a, a police officer so I'm a firearms instructor and I'm a I'm a woman so if I'm pulled over I'm going to be concerned that this officer doesn't like women that have guns. You know, I'm going to I'm going to have concerns about how I'm treated and I'm going to be very careful of how I interact with that officer. So, yeah, I think Christians play a unique role in the libertarian movement of kind of finding that intersection of helping discuss issues of the marginalized of marginalized groups that don't have a voice that are often oppressed by government and regulations and you know spike will be on the program or has been on the program and and talked a lot about that where you know licensing for instance or or issues of criminal justice we can be a voice for marginalized communities and christ really commanded us to do that did they not did he not ken that's absolutely right in fact especially that um you know when it, his his followers were asking him one day hey by the way who is my neighbor you keep talking about being nice to the neighbors who's my neighbor and he tells a story about the good samaritan well that that phrase rolls off our tongue now and we don't really think about what it means but that had to be a shocking story to his followers because saying Good Samaritan 2,000 years ago in, in, in his part of the world 
was sort of like um, somebody in Israel now saying the good Hamas or the good Hezbollah, or, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it was the most religiously and socially unacceptable person that he could name. And that was the hero of his story. And, and, and that's who he wants us to be. He wants us to be people who, who have that perspective on the least of, of us, if you will. He said, you know, if you treat the least of us that way, you've treated me that way. You mentioned being a firearm instructor, Helen. I mean, so maybe that's, you know, is what are the top issues to the caucus? You know, I mean, it's it's not abnormal for a caucus to kind of articulate those top issues. Is it criminal justice, Second Amendment? What you know, give us an idea of where you want to focus policy wise. Uh, we have a whole Slack channel full of those kind of things, <laughs> where if you have a particular interest in something in the platform, whether it's uh, criminal justice reform, or I know the big one is going to be for a lot of people abortion. And that's going to be difficult to tackle within the party and without, you know, outside of the party. Uh, I won't articulate on behalf of the caucus a policy because they're individuals and they're all going to be different. My personal take on uh, abortion is I'm a great fan of Walter Block. I think that if we as a country had simply followed the current platform of the Libertarian Party and Walter Block's evictionist uh, policy since the 70s, we would have saved billions more babies than this wedge issue that bounces back and forth with the two legacy parties. Can you articulate what evictionism is for those who don't know what that means? What he would say, if, if I hope I articulate it well for him, but what he would say is if someone wants an abortion, they would go in the hospital and have that baby delivered. It would be delivered. And if God wills it to live, it'll live. And if medical technology has caught up to the point where it would be able to save that that child at that time, then it would be, you know, able allowed to live. It, I think that just technology, had we been doing that all these years, would have caught up already to any point that you could even remotely say this is life you know that's the big question for us and we have to leave that to lawyers and doctors not the government you know it can weigh in here and is is abortion a leading issue what are some other issues and where do you want to respond to that too where you're I don't, you know as as christians as a christian leader and as a pastor and you know this is an issue that comes up all the time we can't hide from it um in the caucus, we have actually three or four different kind of schools of thought. Helen just articulated one. My personal take on it is that, uh, you know, I, I hate abortion. I think, it's a, I think it's a horrible thing. But there are people who, uh, in, in the, let's say, the religious right in our country, whose perspective is Jesus hates abortion, therefore we have to make it illegal. Well, that, first of all, is very much um, a, a, a theocracy or a theocratic point of view. Everything that Jesus likes is legal and everything Jesus doesn't like is illegal. We got to be careful about that from, from an, a national point of view. But also the fact that, um, you know, just simply using the government to make something legal or illegal doesn't doesn't help us with a problem. And in fact, we saw during prohibition that that making alcohol illegal actually made the problem and, and the impact of the problem worse. So in my opinion, uh, even though I don't like abortion, making abortion illegal is only likely to give us many more problems than we already have. 
and not likely to get rid of the problem of abortion. And I believe that social problems need to be dealt with by the people in social ways, usually at the lowest denominator, the individual and the community level. What are some other issues that you want to tackle with the Christian uh, Liberty Caucus? Uh, it, uh, personally, I, I would like to discuss um, access for people of faith to government without in, intrusion. What we find is that very often, the minute we identify as a Christian, um, all of our motives are now suspect. You know, wh why should I allow a Christian to be in government? Well, why should we allow an atheist to be in government? Why should we? It, what we need to do is educate people on what it is that we really believe is our goal as, as a Christian in government, but also opening the door so that there's not resistance to people of faith. Um, in in party leadership as well as in government itself. Helen, I know being from Ohio, ballot access has to be at the top of your list. 100%, yes. Uh, right now, we're getting ready to gear up and, and start our uh, ballot access petition drive. We have to, in Ohio, in order to register as a party, we have to have a primary ballot publicly funded primary ballot. Uh, and that general election has to have at least 3% for the governor or every two years, the president or the governor. So that's how we maintain ballot access. But we just didn't quite get there with the uh, Jorgensen campaign. So we now are petitioning to get back on. And we currently have, you know, several sitting elected officials for the Libertarian Party that want to run as a Libertarian for re-election in their current seat. And they will have to run as an independent if we don't get our ballot access back. Yeah, the rainwater campaign here in Indiana was successful at 13%. And so now all of a sudden statewide candidates, they want to, they're trying, they just passed out of committee. Uh, a petitioning drive for all of those candidates instead of automatic ballot access. And that's sort of what happened to Ohio. You got a successful candidate in, for governor named Charlie Earl, and yep. uh, I think it was 2010. And then the next, uh, John Kasich just changed the loss. They, they, the the Speaker of the House, most of those people are in jail who helped pass some of those <laughs> Or on their way. <laughs> or on, on their way. At least they've been charged. Let me say that. Uh, you know, um, so yeah, uh, I wish Ohio all the best, but all right, final pitch from both of you for joining. How do you join and why should you join the Christian Liberty Caucus? And again, their website is Christian Liberty Caucus. Uh, dot com. Com. Thank you. Uh, dot com, so, yes. Yeah. Final pitch. Let's start with Helen. I would just ask you to go to the website and sign up for our emails on there and just check us out, see what we're about, come listen to us discuss issues in a meeting. If you have a particular issue that you would like us to champion, come into a meeting and, and talk about that issue. If there is a particular issue that you, as a candidate or a campaign manager, wanna know how to speak to your very conservative, demographic and you want to know how to speak to them and still stay within the way a libertarian would like to see those things to dealt with and bring it to us and, and let us help that. Uh, in addition to our caucus, there is also something called the Libertarian Christian Institute. I would encourage you to go you know, Google them. Dr. Norm Horn, uh, if you haven't talked to him, he's a great guy. They have a, a new book. Here's Faith Seeking Freedom. I would totally recommend that. It's a great book. I have lots of highlights and folded dog deer corners because there's some, some, some really good information in there. So they are not like us. We're very political where you have to be a member of the party to be you know, a formal vote, voting member of the, the caucus where the Christian Institute is uh, just libertarianism philosophy and you can be associated with any party so 
we both have a different space, but very friendly with each other. Ken, final pitch for the Christian Liberty Caucus. I, I want to echo what Helen said. First, just come to the website, christianlibertycaucus.com, and sign up for the emails and get to know us. But also, very important, is if, you're, if you just want to have some dialogue about what Christians think and how Christians think, as Helen said, you know, from the conservative perspective, also, I would point out, I came to the party by way of being an active Democrat. I was the chair of the, the uh, Civil Rights Platform Committee for the Democratic Party of Hawaii 20 odd years ago. Um, and so my background is civil rights, community uh, activism, and, and uh, from a more liberal perspective. But, but we are all here to, to be part of the dialogue about how to interact with Christians inside the party. And so absolutely engage us, even if you're not a Christian, happy to have you engage us. All right. Again, that is ChristianLibertyCaucus.com. Thank you to Helen Gilson and Ken Armstrong. Thank you both for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Chris. Thank you. It was it was exciting. I, I changed my outfit several times to be on, you know, the, the most well watched and well regarded show in the nation. So, well, thank you very much. Yes, this is a very powerful show. We just uh, ended lockdowns in California when we had Jeff Bennett on to talk about it. So I, I look forward to uh, converting the entire nation to Christian libertarianism. So That's with awesome. this episode. So thank you both for joining me and I appreciate the kind words and thank you so much for listening to the Chris Spangle show. We will see you soon. Thanks. Bye.